Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is that you're joining me for this video. Thank you once again for clicking on the Penboy Roy Fountain Pen Review channel. The subject of today's video is the Pilot Explorer Fountain Pen. Before I get into the background information, let me give a big thanks to my sponsors, Kenro Industries, the official U.S. distributor of luxury brands such as Montegrappa and Aurora. They're also responsible for the awesome new Estabrook Esti. Check them out at your favorite retailer. This channel is also sponsored by Goldspot Pens, home of fountain pens of the world. Check out their website at goldspot.com and sign up for their newsletter to get a discount on your first order. The Pilot Pen Company was started in the year 1918, founded by two dudes named Ryosuke Namiki and Masao Wada. At the time, it was called the Namiki Manufacturing Company. They were a successful manufacturer of writing instruments in their day, having established sales and distribution throughout Asia, Europe, and the United States. In the year 1938, they changed the company name to the Pilot Pen Company. My research revealed a couple of theories on why they changed their name. Some speculate that a pilot was more prestigious than a sailor. Thus, the name Pilot would appeal to people more so than their competitor, the Sailor Pen Company. There are other theories that the changing of the name Namiki to Pilot would disassociate the brand with a Japanese-sounding name, in light of the Japanese involvement in the Second World War, and thus lead to sales being unaffected by the negative feelings Westerners may have for the Japanese. Whatever it is the case may be, Pilot remained a powerhouse in the area of worldwide sales of writing instruments, having been responsible for the sales of Arushi lacquer pens and its growing popularity throughout the world. Their success was also due largely in part of innovations in the area of fountain pens. One such fountain pen was the Capless Fountain Pen, first released in the year 1964. The brand was and still is known for their quality and precision craftsmanship in all of their pens, ranging from price points of only a couple of dollars to the tens of thousands. Today, the brand is divided into two parts. We have the Namiki line of pens, which are your more costly handmade pens that can easily be described as works of art. We also have the less expensive Pilot line of pens. The pen in question today is of a newer design called the Pilot Explorer. Why the pen is called the Explorer, other than the name sounding cool, is beyond me. Honestly, holding this pen or looking at this pen fails in any way of making me feel like Indiana Jones, nor does the look draw to mind images of the Tomb Raider Lara Croft. But it for sure looks and sounds kinda cool. That's all I have for the background information. Moving on to the neutral zone. Those elements about the pen that are neither good or bad, or can be good or bad, depending on you. Our nib is a stainless steel proprietary Pilot No. 5 nib, laser engraved with the words Pilot Super Quality Japan. Notice the lack of the hash marks on the shoulders as we've seen on the Pilot Metropolitan nibs. More on that later. The feed is a proprietary plastic feed and appears to be the same feed found on our Metropolitans. The nibbed feed are not part of an unscrewable nib unit, however can be removed using your fingers or a grip. These are friction fit into a translucent injection molded smoke colored grip section and are not locked into place. The threads on the grip are part of the same injection molded translucent smoke colored grip section. Although injection molded, the relief marks are subtle and not easily visible. They screw into the plastic inner threads of the body that shows a gradient of paint going from green to white, revealing that the colors of the pen are painted on and not actually the color of the plastic itself. Itself. The rest of the body has a tapered tubular design, colored in a metallic green paint. It tapers down to a flat black end finial that has a hollow vented design. The bottom is flat with a slight rounded raised surface. The cap is more of the same plastic colored design. The finial is a plain black unbranded finial that is the same design as the end finial. There are these two circular holes on both sides of the cap, revealing the sleeve of the cap's finial, giving this cap a pair of eyes in the same orientation of a goldfish. The clip is a stiff yet flexible plastic clip that holds onto an extended bracket that is part of the cap body. The end of the clip is a pretty generic looking folded bulge often seen in your lower end mass produced pen clips. There is no center band, instead there is this step design that tapers to the end of the cap. On the side of the cap is this block lettered 3D depression reading Pilot, and next to it, the Pilot logo. The pen was packaged in a Pilot branded matte finished cardboard box. Inside the box is a thin metal oval shaped clamshell case with a clear plastic viewing window, as well as a fold out sheet of paper with your warranty information and instructions. Inside the case is your pen in a stiff foam cutout, 
as well as a blue proprietary Pilot Ink cartridge. A CON40 ink converter was not included, most likely to avoid the additional cost of having to include hemorrhoid medication as the CON40 ink converter is truly a massive pain in the ass. Now let's talk about the way the pen writes. In my opinion, the way it writes qualifies as neither good or bad, or can be good or bad, depending on who's using the pen. To me, this nib feels on the side of generic. Is it smooth? No. Is it scratchy? Also no. Is it misaligned? Again, no. But it does have a feel of edginess and flimsiness when writing with it. That may not make sense, but let me elaborate by saying that this feels much different than the nib on a Pilot Metropolitan. Yes, they look the same with regard to shape, but they are in fact different when it comes to feel. Compared to the Pilot Metropolitan, this nib feels less substantial. It feels like it's made of a thinner steel, giving it less shock absorption. Now, that could also be because of the body being made of plastic and very light, and therefore your hand being more exposed to the friction of the nib and paper. But that doesn't account for the flimsy feel of the nib. Now, this could be favorable, as it does offer a slight amount of line variation but it is also possibly unfavorable in that it feels flimsy and for the lack of a better word, feels raw. It has a toothiness that reverberates throughout the pen while writing on even the smoothest of Rhodia dot pads. If I had to compare this nib with any other nib I've ever used, I would have to say it's comparable to a fine nib on the Delight New Moon version one. I find that the Pilot Metropolitan nibs are more substantial and firm with a smoother feel when writing. But like I said, the qualities mentioned regarding the Explorer could be both good and or bad. With regard to the ink flow and consistency, there are no complaints. The line width is true to a Japanese fine. Once again, there is nothing wrong with this nib per se, but at the same time, it feels very generic. That's all I have for the neutral zone. Moving on to the good. Those elements about the pen that are good. The quality control on this pen is on point. The cap opens and closes with a snug and secure snap that gives the user a strong sensation of security. There is no wiggle room or give between the cap and the body once the pen is closed. The overall tolerances are airtight. Posting or unposting this pen doesn't affect the balance of the pen either, being that this pen is overall very light. I also find the design to be modern and sleek. It's appropriate for anyone of any age and has plenty of color options to boot. And despite the body being made of plastic, the pen in the hand seems to be sturdy and resistant to damage coming from the hazards of everyday use by both a younger user tossing it around, throwing it into a school bag, to the working class hero carrying the pen in briefcases, pockets, purses, or tool bags. Not sure the same can be said for the painted finish, but for sure can be said in terms of durability. Speaking of the finish, the colored surface has a cool looking metallic matte finish that looking at it could for sure fool someone into thinking that it was made of anodized aluminum. That's all I have for the good. Moving on to the bad. Let's talk coin. This pen has an MSRP of $29.50. With online retailers, you can score this pen for $23.60. Not really a bad price when you think of it. But when I looked a little deeper, I found some things that tickled my lizard brain and made me question the value in the price point. For example, the nib. It says on it, super quality Japan. Not that big of a deal, right? But that made me think of a huge bag of Halloween candy I saw a few weeks ago. On the bag was a colorful sign that read 100% hygienic. So I had to stop and wonder, what exactly is it that prompts the need to advertise on a food product that the said food product in question is in fact hygienic? It made me hesitant in giving the candy to children. In the same vein, I feel the sudden need to engrave super quality Japan on the nib was done so as a response or a preemptive action to an action that already happened. What action do you speak of? Good question. Let me explain. Some time ago, I purchased a couple of pens called the Pilot 78G+. These are cheap injection molded plastic pens made in China for the Chinese market. And these pens are branded in every way as Pilot pens. You know what else those pens had? They had nibs that had the exact same laser engraved Pilot Super Quality Japan words on them. And you know what those nibs didn't have? They didn't have the hash marks on the shoulders of the nibs that are found on the Pilot Metropolitan nibs that we know and love that are made in Japan. So I had to look deeper. What my looking deeper revealed was, although the Explorer nib does in fact say Super Quality Japan on them, nowhere on the pen, the included literature, or the box, does it say where the Explorer is actually made? Now, one can certainly argue that the Japan on the nib where it says super quality Japan is engraved indicates where it's made. 
I would argue that the Explorer nib saying Japan on it is no more an indicator of the country of manufacturer than our Conklin nibs reading Toledo, Ohio on them indicates that the pens and nibs are made in Toledo, Ohio. So my theory, and I could be completely wrong, is that Pilot got a taste of the diminished cost of manufacturing pens by outsourcing to China with the Pilot 78G Plus and liked the taste of reduced cost so much, they went with it again for the Explorer. Couple that with the writing experience, the design of the nib looking exactly the same as the 78G Plus, and the fact that there is no conclusive statement of country of manufacturer, I'm left with a high confidence in my theory that the Explorer is an outsourced pen from China. And that's totally fine. But if in the event that I'm right, what excuse does Pilot have not including a converter? If in the act of outsourcing, the company saves money, even if they include a converter. Then on top of that, if you consider that the Pilot Metropolitan has an MSRP that is as low as the discounted price of the Explorer, and the Metropolitan also has a discounted price even lower than that of the discounted price of the Explorer, and includes a converter, how does the price point of the Explorer make any sense to a penny-wise informed fountain pen virus infected individual? In my opinion, it doesn't. That's all I have for the bad, moving on to the ugly. Those elements about the pen that should not be, but are. Now, despite my rant in the bad, I have to give it to Pilot. Outsourced or not, the quality control on the Explorer is impeccable. The pen has no flaws to speak of in the build or design. It's mass-produced, yet stands above all the negative implications associated with quality often seen in mass-produced products. Like I said, if it is outsourced to the lowest bidder, that's okay. Especially if the product in question has a level of perfection like we have here in the Explorer. So, regarding the ugly, nothing. It's high noon. Decision-making time. Should you or should you not pull the trigger on the Pilot Explorer? The answer to this question depends largely on who's using the pen. I think that this is a great pen for a new fountain pen virus infected individual or a great pen to infect a poor non-infected fool still waiting in a pool of ballpoint ignorance and filth. And in those scenarios, I'd say pull the trigger on the Explorer. But if you take into account the cost of the converter, plus the pen, making it closer to $30 in price point, plus the possibility that my theory is correct, plus the writing experience being as generic and neutral as it is, I have to say hold off and holster up. Because for the money, although not a lot, there are other options that offer more, even within the same brand, that cost the same, if not less, than the price of the Explorer. That was my review of the Pilot Explorer Fountain Pen. I hope you found it helpful. Thanks again goes out to my sponsors, Kenro Industries and Goldspot Pens. Don't forget to check out the link below for discounts to Goldspot Pens, exclusive to Penboy Roy Fountain Pen Review Channel subscribers. Thanks again for watching, and thanks again for the love and support. Love you guys. Be well, be safe.